Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Mike Anderson. Today we're going to start our first of a two-part series with our fisheries district biologist talking about ice fishing and their districts. My first guest this week is South Central Fisheries Supervisor Paul Bailey. Paul, how are things shaping up in your district? I think there's a lot to be optimistic about this winter for sure, uh, especially when it comes to our walleye fisheries. Uh, our pike are still holding their own, I guess you could say, but perch would be, uh, you know, of the big three species that anglers typically target through the ice, perch might be, uh, I guess, leave a little bit to be desired this year, but uh, I think there's a lot to be optimistic about. Okay, let's talk about the high water levels in your district first, Paul. Sure, that should mean, I mean, good things for angling access, for sure. Uh, you know, as far as anglers being able to get on the ice, uh, hopefully access uh, is decent this winter, uh, avoiding any big snowfall events. Uh, but uh, I guess the, the real benefit to the rising water we saw this fall is probably going to happen next spring where uh, we're going to see good things happen as far as forage fish production in a lot of these lakes and then hopefully see some good perch reproductive success especially as a result of this higher water. Okay, let's move into walleye populations. Yeah, that's definitely I think going to be the brightest spot. I mean a lot of the usual suspects out there should uh, uh, provide good opportunity for anglers this winter. Places like Josephine, uh, Alkaline Lake, Dry Lake, you know, that a lot of anglers are very familiar with. Uh, have some very healthy walleye populations in them right now. But as far as the south central part of the state, we've got literally dozens of, of good walleye fisheries out there. So it'll take a little legwork, I'm sure, for anglers to figure out which ones are, are really going to cooperate with them this winter, but uh, there's very good opportunity out there as far as walleye are concerned. Okay, and northern pike? Uh, I'd say northern pike are more holding their own. Uh, they tend to thrive under those uh, rising water level conditions uh, in the springtime too. Uh, and some of our pike fisheries were definitely more impacted uh, by winter kill last winter than say our, a lot of our walleye fisheries were. So there's still good pike opportunity out there, uh, you know, lakes like Helen, uh, Horsehead, um, uh, West Napoleon, Goose Lake uh, are definitely going to provide some good pike fishing opportunity out there. Okay, you mentioned a little bit about perch. Uh, how about your perch panfish populations? Yeah, perch, uh, we, we tend to be more boomer bust fisheries in North Dakota and the South Central District I guess has been kind of in the heart of our boom and bust perch fisheries over the last few years. What we typically see is when we get a, these high water events, uh, say like in the after the winter of 96, 97, again in the springs of 2009, 10 and 11, uh, that led to a, a real boom in our perch fishing. Those rising water levels uh, led to great perch reproductive success. Uh, and then we saw great perch fishing usually in that four to six year range after those uh, high water events happen. So the last, uh, I guess, great conditions we've had for perch uh, natural reproductive success were the springs of 9, 10, 11. So the boom we just went through is kind of now, kinda in, unfortunately, in our rear view mirror. Uh, but there's still good opportunity for perch out there. Uh, coming up with a 20 perch limit might be a little more uh, of a tall order, but a lot of the lakes that anglers uh, had good perch success in over the last few years now have lower numbers of perch, but there's still some of those 12 plus inch fish out there. Just uh, temper expectations a little bit. Maybe uh, numbers might not be great, but there's still opportunity for some really nice sized perch out there. Okay, your most popular fishery in the South Central is Lake Oahe. How are things looking at Lake Oahe? Ah, good. One of, the, one of the neatest things about Lake Oahe is its uh, ability to produce some real trophy size fish out there, uh, both walleye and northern pike. Uh, pike numbers uh, did start to rebound a little bit. Uh, we had uh, very good pike reproductive success, again, with the, the higher water year, especially uh, 2009. It was a, an excellent year for pike reproductive success. Uh, pike numbers have dipped a little bit, but we're starting to see a rebound now. So we've still got that nice trophy component to the pike fishery out there with some of those 20 plus pounders and then some uh, a diversity of sizes of pike uh, behind them. Uh, walleye, again, there's, there's certainly some trophy potential in Lake Oahe, but uh, the meat of the population right now uh, is a lot of these fish in say that 13 to 18 inch range. We had great walleye reproductive success in uh, 2014, 15, and 16. So a lot of those fish now are getting to sizes where anglers are certainly going to be very interested in them. Okay, and how's the how are the crappies doing? Uh, a crappie, I'd say, are a lot like our perch, uh, or Lake Oahe crappie are a lot like our perch across the state. Uh, kind of a boomer bust kind of fishery. I wouldn't say we've busted by any means with the crappie in Lake Oahe. There's there's certainly fishable numbers out there, uh, but the the what led to the great crappie fishing in recent years was this enormously strong 2009 year class when Lake Oahe filled after years of drought, produce some excellent conditions for uh, crappie reproductive success. And that's what anglers have kind of been fishing, uh, targeting these last few years. So their numbers uh, are definitely dwindling. A lot of those fish are in the, you know, that 10 year old range now. So uh, there's still some of those out there and a few other fish behind it for sure crappie wise, but uh, 
the, the absolutely spectacular fishing anglers uh, encountered the last few years might not be quite as good for crappie this winter. Okay, overall in South Central District, things should be okay this winter as long as Mother Nature allows access. Absolutely, that's always one of the keys. A lot of great information, Paul, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Joining me now is Southeast Fisheries Supervisor, BJ Kratz. BJ, how are things shaping up in your district as far as ice conditions? Well, things are freezing over pretty well. We've got some pretty good ice formation on, on most of our lakes right now. Uh, obviously a lot of water in the country, so uh, we're, we're full in a lot of places that we didn't have that water last fall. Okay, let's move into your fish populations. How are walleyes doing? Walleyes are doing well. You know, our, our stocking program is pretty intense and we, we try to keep up with the water levels both ways. If the water decreases, we decrease stocking sometimes, and if it increases, we in increase stocking rates. So uh, overall, the walleye populations are looking really good in the southeast district, and I say this every year, but uh, probably in the best shape they've ever been if you look at the whole picture. Okay, let's move into northern pike. Well, northern pike in general, we've kind of gotten away from that, as I've mentioned before, because the request is for, for walleyes primarily, but we do have uh, you know, some natural reproduction that occurs, and this year was a great year for, for pike in general because we did have uh, ample snow uh, melt this, this spring and it facilitated good pike production in a lot of our waters. Uh, we picked up young of the year pike when we were doing standard adult surveys early on in June, which is a good indicator. So um, Twin Lake, for example, is a good one. We picked up a lot of young of the year pike in there. We had uh, increased water level there about a foot and a half and it, it made for good, good pike, and that's kind of a popular place amongst uh, a pike fishermen. So there's an age class coming on there. Uh, anglers, if they're after pike in general, Lake Ashtabula is a good, good lake. There is a good size structure in that lake. There's a good chance of catching a, a trophy too. You know, it has the potential to produce some really, really large fish. Okay, you have a lot of perch lakes in your district. We do. Um, you know, perch are kind of the, a, a creature of productivity, so uh, when you have new lakes and, and in short order, they can grow up to be pretty large in size and anglers can capitalize on them when they kind of deplete their food source. But in general, we've got North Eccleson is a pretty good perch lake. It consistently produces fish. They're not real large, uh, but in terms of, of numbers, um, they're there, you know, about a seven and a half inch average. Moon Lake is another one that's got lots of action. If you want to just go out and catch perch with the kids or something, it's a great place to take, take kids. Um, Key Lake, for example, that's, a, that's got a few bigger perch in it and still pretty good population. You know, fish over 13 inches and stuff are in there. Uh, another, you know, popular ice fishing destination for folks for perch is Craft Slough, uh, which numbers are down a little bit, but there's still some opportunity for perch in that one. Okay, let's move into your crappies, BJ. There's some things going on this year with some of your more popular crappie lakes. Explain. Yeah, we, we needed water to fill some of our places, but unfortunately, we, as everybody knows, we got probably too much in some places. And Jamestown and Pipestone Reservoirs are a good example. For the first time in history, uh, they're actually going to release water all winter long under the ice. So for that reason, those two um, impoundments are going to be closed for everything. Uh, so those folks that like to chase crappies are probably going to have to go to uh, Lake Lemoore. There, you know, last year it was pretty good for crappies in Lake Lemoore or even Ashtabula. Uh, you're not going to have the numbers, but you'll have quality fish there. Okay, so things are shaping up to be good for ice fishing in the southeast part of the state. Yep, they are, but uh, keep in mind that typically when you get, you know, elevated water levels, it means more productivity, which translates into more food for fish in general. So this, you know, might not be as fast and furious as in years past, but keep in mind that, you know, as things progress, next year might even be better because that productivity will diminish. Okay, and access should be good as long as Mother Nature allows? Right, if we, if we can keep away from, you know, six foot high snow banks every place and so forth, people should be able to get on fine. And like I said, we're, we're set up for some pretty good ice formation this winter right now, so. A lot of great information, BJ, thank you. Thank you. Joining me now is fisheries biologist Todd Caspers. Todd, you manage the Devil's Lake system, but let's talk about your walleye populations in Devil's Lake and Snump Lake. Well, on Devil's Lake right now, our population is doing relatively well, but there are a lot of younger fish out there right now. We had lower reproduction from 2013 to 2015, so we have lower numbers of those kind of prime keeper size fish that are 15 to 20 inches. So those numbers of those fish are a little below average, but we have decent numbers of fish smaller than 15 inches. So they'll be fish to catch, but they might be a little smaller than most anglers would like. On Stump Lake, we've had pretty good reproduction there over the last few years. So there's the walleye population is a little above 
average out there right now with a you know variety of walleye sizes out there. Okay, let's move on to your northern pike. Um, on Devil's Lake, our pike population is still doing just fine, and there's you know a good variety of sizes available. A lot of those you know kind of keeper size northern pike, but we always have some you know trophy potential out there as well. Okay, and perch. Uh, perch right now is probably they're a little down. They're probably going to be below average this winter, so it might be a you know a little slower winter for perch fishing and you know a lot of those will probably be around kind of nine inches but there's always some of those you know jumbo size perch out there okay any other panfish in the system um we have have a good white bass population right now they're actually you know at a kind of a record level in terms of the fish around 14 inches or so they aren't really a target in the winter time necessarily but if you do find them you can catch some so how about lake irvine how are the walleye populations in lake irvine uh, Irvine walleye are doing pretty well. They're about average and you know there's a good variety of sizes out there for anglers to catch. And that got a lot of pressure last year. Yeah that gets you know a fair amount of ice fishing pressure when access conditions are good and it freezes over generally before any other place on the system so it gets the early effort. Okay and northern pike? Yeah northern pike on Irvine are always pretty abundant too so they're actually maybe a little bit too abundant for their own good at times. There's a fair amount of competition for food between the northern pike, so it actually wouldn't hurt for anglers to, to take some fish out of there for the northern pike. Okay, and panfish? Uh, there's not much for panfish in Lake Irvine. It's mostly a pike walleye fishery, but there are some perch in the lake, and when anglers do catch them, they tend to be good size. It's just they don't see very many of them. As long as Mother Nature allows, access should be good once the lake is frozen. Yeah, it always comes down to just how much snow we get and if we get decent ice, which we do get decent ice usually, but the snow is what will degrade access conditions if it gets too deep. Yeah, overall it should be a decent winter, I think, provided that the fish bite. And It always depends on what they have for forage too, whether they're going to be friendly to the anglers or not. So, But you know, I would anticipate a, a decent ice fishing season. A lot of great information, Todd. Thank you. Thank you. Joining me now is Northeast Fisheries Supervisor Randy Hiltner. Randy, how are ice conditions shaping up in your district? As of today, uh, we're seeing uh, ice forming pretty well on the smaller district lakes, and they're starting to walk out fishing. Okay, a lot of water. Yeah, water levels actually rebounded this fall, which going into winter is a good thing as far as uh, preventing some winter kill. Okay, let's move into your fish populations, Randy. First of all, let's talk about walleyes. We've got uh, some really good walleye lakes. Uh, North Lake Washington has a uh, good population up to about 22 inches. Just down the road a few miles is Lake Coe where there's lots of bigger fish. Um, also southwest of my, in my district, uh, Herd Seal Tuffy Lake has a real good walleye population and Silver Lake Wildlife Management Area has a good batch too. Okay, how about Northern Pike? Pike. Uh, are ubiquitous. They're everywhere in my district, but some, some of the better lakes would be like Carpenter Lake, uh, Lake Upsilon, Island Lake, Sibley Lake, and Red Willow Lake. Okay, and a lot of panfish in your district? Yeah, there's just about everywhere a smaller perch, but uh, finding a bigger perch is getting to be trickier. Uh, Silver Lake WMA, again, has a good perch population, and some of those are bigger fish. Uh, Hami Dam is another one that has an eight, nine inch perch. Okay, how about crappies? Uh, if you go over east to like Whitman Dam and Hami Dam and even uh, for numbers up in Renwick Dam, there's quite a few crappie. Okay, how is access going to be this year? You know, the water levels are high. Does that play into access on any of these lakes? No, just uh, the snowpack is the big thing and how many storms you have. Last winter, for those with a short memory, was bad for ice fishing in terms of getting out on the lakes. Mother Nature allows ice fishing in the Northeast should be okay? I'd say better than okay. You know, there's, there's lots of fishing opportunities, pike and walleye, and the, even some panfish. And we forgot bluegill, which uh, Wood Lake and uh, Red Willow Lake have pretty good numbers of bluegill as well. A lot of great information, Randy. Thank, Thank you. you. Here are some recommendations for ice thickness. Two inches or less, stay off the ice. 4 inches for walking on ice, 6 inches for a snowmobile or ATV, 8 to 12 inches for a small car, and 12 to 15 inches for a pickup. And remember, ice is never 100% safe. For the Fisheries Division and the rest of the staff here at the Game and Fish Department, thanks for joining us for this week's Outdoors Online. 
We'll see you again next week. Mm -hmm.